In this video, Phil is going to show you how to write your own custom function to remove text between delimiters that you can use again and again. You're going to learn a ton of advanced techniques that you can use even if you don't have an immediate need for this function as he breaks it down into easy to manage steps so you can write your own. Plus, there's a link to the written step-by-step -step tutorial in the video description. I've got some source data in this blue table here and I want to remove all percentages. Specifically, I want to remove all brackets or parentheses and the percentages so I can turn this blue data table into this green cleaned data. There's no native function in Power Query to do this, so I'll have to write my own code. And the way I'm going to approach it is to first of all, split the text string in every row at every right parenthesis, then extract the text from the beginning of each of those substrings up to the left parenthesis, and then recombine the substrings. I've already loaded this table into a query, so let's open up the editor, and then I'm going to add a column, and I want to split at every right parenthesis. So I'm going to use text.split. And what am I splitting? I'm splitting the data column. The separator I'm using to split the text is the right parenthesis. Click OK. This gives me a list in each row. And if I look at these lists, you notice that the uh, last item is empty. And it's the same for all of those lists. That's just the way the split function is working. So to get around that, I'll just go back to the custom column. I'm going to wrap all of this in list.removeMatchingItems. And what this will do will remove any empty strings. An empty string being two double quotes with nothing in between them. And this is supplied as a list, so must be surrounded by curly braces. And if I check the list, you can see that the last empty item is gone. The next step is to get the portion of the string up to the left parenthesis. And I can do that using text.start. But I'm going to use that in combination with the list.transform function. What I'm going to do is list.transform will take the string in each one of these elements of the list and then apply the text.start function to it. Essentially, it's going to replace the current list with the new list generated by text.start. So let's add a custom column and list.transform. And what list am I transforming? Well, it's the custom column. And then for each one of the items in that list, I'm going to use text.start. Remember, it's case sensitive. So the underscore is shorthand for the element in the list. So text.start and I want to extract the start of the string up to the position of the left parenthesis. So I'll use text or position of to find that. And it's the position in the current item of the list and I'm looking for left parenthesis. So I'll click OK, check my list, make sure that's right. Yeah, they look correct. As you can see, the brackets or the parenthesis and the percentages are removed from each one of those list items. So all that's left to do now is recombine all of these substrings in the list back into a single string. Add another custom column. And we're just going to use text.combine. And we're combining what's in the custom one column. Okay, that's great. I've got some code that extracts the text from between delimiters and gets rid of those delimiters for me as well. But if I ever want to use that code or do the same thing, I've got to rewrite all of those steps. It's going to be better if I have a function. So let's turn this into a function that can be reused. Right click on the query and then duplicate. And I'm going to rename this to fx remove text between delimiters. Open up the advanced editor. There are a number of things that need to be done to change this code into a function. But if you just go through them one by one, methodically it's pretty straightforward first off i'm going to change this source step because with the function i'm not going to be loading a source from anywhere really i'm going to be passing arguments in so let's change this into a function declaration and i'm going to pass in three arguments the first is going to be the text string that i want to work on and the other two are going to be the delimiters so the left delimiter and the right delimiter then I want to add a let statement here. Just put some indentations. And I'm going to return. And I'll come back to that. I'll just put the in statement there for now. And overall, the function is going to return what source generates. 
and source is going to be generated by the three steps that are in the uh, let area just below it. Now I'm just going to rename all of this because don't really want to have big long names like that. I'm just going to call them something simple L1, L2, L3. And now I can say return L3, whatever's in L3. I don't need any of these table.add column functions because I'm not operating on a table, I'm not adding columns. So I can get rid of all of this. And I need to remove the end bracket there. Same for this line. Oops, typo there. Because I've renamed the steps, I need to change any occurrence of the old step names. So in L3 here, I need to change that reference to a column to L2. And I need to change that to L1. And then because I'm using arguments and not tables or columns, I need to put those arguments into these steps. So rather than splitting the data column, I'm splitting text string. This is my right delimiter. This is my left delimiter. And that's it. Click on done. And we have a new function ready to be used. So let's go back to the main query. Just get rid of these two columns. We don't need them. And I'll just get rid of this as well. So add a column, invoke a custom function, call it clean data. This is the new column name. Query or the function query that I'm going to call is the one I just created. So then you've got the three parameters and it wants to know what you're going to pass in. So the text string is the data column from the table here, the left delimiter, left parenthesis and the right delimiter right parenthesis click OK job done okay that's fantastic but what if I want to keep the delimiters in this case I'm removing them I don't want to keep the parentheses but you may have occasions where you do want to keep your delimiters you just want to remove the stuff in between them you can do that and it just needs a couple of simple changes to the function let's go back here select the function advanced editor first thing you want to do is we need to pass in a fourth argument in order to let the function know whether we want to keep delimiters or not. So I'm just going to call it keep delim. And it's a logical, so it's either true or false. And all you need to do is change this last line. So check the value of keep delim. So if keep delim, now I don't need to explicitly say if keep delim equals true or false. If keep delim means if true. Next thing after that would be if true, then I want to keep the delimiters. And I just need to alter text combine slightly. And I'm going to combine the two delimiters here. And they need to be supplied as a list. So it's left delim, comma, right delim here. So I'm saying if keep delim is true, then combine the result of L2 with the left and the right delimiters. It would be good if I could spell. There we go else so if keep delim is false i don't want to keep the delimiters i just want to return l2 inside text combine of course and that's it click on done you can see the function now has a fourth parameter called keep delim obviously so back in my query i'm now getting an error in this last step because i've just changed the function definition so where i was calling it before with three arguments it's uh, now giving me an error because it needs four arguments so let's open up the step here and I just need to put either true or false here. So if I say true, keep the delimiters, click OK. You can see the delimiters are in the string. And if I go back here and change this to false, then my delimiters are removed. I hope this function is useful to you. Please let me know in the comments below if there's anything you'd like me to cover and I'll try to get to that in future weeks. Thanks. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.